right, team. Coach Dana Cavalier here with the Becoming a Champion show. And today's episode is an awesome one. If you have seen the movie Rudy, today I sit down with the real Rudy, the guy, the guy who the movie was based on. And I got to tell you, it's amazing because I'm a huge fan of the movie and I'm an even bigger fan of the real guy, Rudy. You know, open, honest, motivating, exciting, and most importantly, a message that says you can do anything. And you really can. So sit back, enjoy today's show. If you do, give it a like, give it a subscribe, give us some comments, and sit back and enjoy today's show with Rudy Rudiger. Enjoy. So I know there's a lot of people that are, you know, people know you through the movie. Mm -hmm. obviously, and, and it inspired a lot of, a lot of folks. What, you know, I was watching it just last week again, and it's such an inspirational film gets, uh, every sports guy gets excited and, and juiced up over it. But what, what was it like just living that story? What was it like for you? It was, it, well, it was a movie. Yeah, no, I know, I know, I know it was a no, movie. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It was a movie in real life. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's what I kept saying. This yeah. is a movie. This isn't true. <laughs> wow. So, so, <laughs> you know? mo so most of it is real. Yeah, because I went to Hollywood and put, put the whole moment story together because uh, you can't make up that stuff, you know? And uh, I just felt, boy, there's a lot of people like me uh that are going through the same kind of journey maybe we can help them biblically uh instead of pushing it in their face yeah uh, but we do biblical messages what if you break down the movie it's very biblical yeah and uh without pushing faith in their face they will discover faith you know that how important it is mm. to have faith whatever you choose to be yeah you know it's very important so th that's part of the decision making i made because you know um uh, well you have to remember two things when you do a movie who's going to watch it <laughs> yeah. who wants to watch this yeah. i only need one tackle who wants to watch that you know <laughs> so that's i thought true. about that i said really that's not the story it's getting to that one moment Mm. How many people quit on that one little moment that they're so close to and it looks so dark and it looks like it's never going to happen, they quit. That's because they have no purpose. I was on our podcast the other day, I was talking to a Navy SEAL guy. Uh, I mean, he, and the way he became a SEAL is through adversity. And I said, wow, that's interesting. That's why things happen because of adversity. When you take adversity, turn it into positive uh, movements, things happen in the way they should. You know, you have anger, you have a lot of anger, you got to turn your anger in a positive way and do positive things with anger, because anger is very powerful. Yeah. Uh, but you have to use it right and use it effectively in, in a positive way. Instead of hitting something, you uh, say, okay, what can I do not to hit something or instead of yelling or uh, reacting to something what can i do not to react how what what cause and effect is this you know at the mental stage so it all became mental everything's mental between your ears as you know eight those eight inches are so important it's how, what your thoughts are so and he said the same thing he said a lot of people think it's physical but it's all mental becoming a seal that's why most guys don't make it because they can't handle it mentally you know they decide early on oh i can't do that oh that's not me i'll never get through that where the other way i don't care what it is i'm getting through it you know i'm not turning back that's it they're gonna have to you know it's like there's a great statement i read this great statement once why you make it in life he says think about going to an island on a boat Burn the boat, because you're not going back. Yeah. <laughs> what a great statement. Right. I said, burn your boat. I said, wow, that's that's so true. And that's what I basically did. I burnt everything that got me to where I was. And that's where you, now you have to make it. You don't have a choice. And and that's where characters develop. That's where, you know, you got to have the heart. Uh, even the seal, 
or the kids who go through that training, if there's no heart, there's no purpose. And, yeah. and the, the purpose is so important. So anyhow. So it's attitude, it, it sounds I, like I, a lot of it is decision. It's also just make, it's making the decision to say, well, you, you know, it, it's saying I am, I like what you're saying on your shirt. I am a gym. I am good. I am that I am going to make it. I am, I am. That's the self talk you have to do. I am going to do this. I am, you know, I am good looking. Uh, I am skinny. I am physically fit, but you got to do the work. Yeah. <laughs> because you say I am, you still have to do the work. Most people won't do the work. They say the words, but they won't do the work. That's where attitude comes into mental. See, mentally, I think people ask me about Notre Dame. How did you get through Notre Dame? You weren't really academically a candidate for Notre Dame. You're, to you, I wasn't. But to, to me, I was. What I had to do is find another way to get there academically. And that's a junior college, which, by the way, you never told me that was my way to Notre Dame. You told me I was too stupid to go to Notre Dame. And junior college was... Uh, something you can't do because that's where all dumb kids go. Well, you know what? That's why I don't come to you for advice. Yeah. I'm not coming to you for advice. I'm not going to come back to you and say, look what I did. You don't need to know what I did. It's not, I don't have anything to prove to you. Those are the people I've stayed away from that freed me and freed my mental state. It kept my mental state pure, simple, with a purpose. Uh, Cause it's real easy to get, you know, layered with goofy thoughts and layered with bad thoughts because some of the people you trust, by the way, could be the closest ones to you, and, and they're the ones that are telling you you can't do it, and you and you buy into that. Yeah. Well, those are the ones you love and leave, and you come back and help them by becoming what you became, and you inspire them. You don't get mad at them. Just say, hey, I'll be back. Just relax. Check this out. I know what I'm doing. I got this, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I love that. I, how, how was it for you? And I didn't know this about you. I didn't, I didn't know that you grew up in a family with 14 children. Well, that was the, that, that, yeah, that's seven sisters, six brothers. That was a challenge, but my mother was very organized where my dad worked three jobs. I mean, he didn't have the perfect job, but he did have a union job. Yeah. But he had to work two other jobs to put food on the table and clothes on our back and make sure we had good bald tires, not bald tires. <laughs> make sure we had a good bad car, not a bad car. You yeah. know, it's that's how we live. And make sure when he built our house, we moved in with no windows or doors. Mm. That's because he can only afford so much of the house. Then he built onto the house <clears throat> as as he got. But that's how he lived. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, but his, uh, his family had a dairy farm and they lost a dairy farm because of a disease the cattle had. Mm. They lost all their land, everything. So that kind of destroyed the dream. That's why we did the speech in the movie. Dreams cause heartache and pain. Mm. And, my, and we want to show your dad's more protective. He doesn't want you to try. He's just protecting you. He doesn't want you to get hurt. Yeah. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that's common. I think a lot of parents. It's very common. Yeah, uh, yeah, a lot of parents come from that perspective. Their their yeah. intent is to protect, but in sometimes yeah. the interpretation is that they don't want me to do this. They don't want yes. me. Yes, don't yes. believe yes. that I can. It's a tough <clears throat> element. Sometimes you got to let go and let and, and be there when they do fall. Help them. You yeah. know, let them fall. Let them fail. It's okay. That's how they learn. Well, I'm guessing, you know, growing up again in a family of that size, you also learn elements of competition as well, because, you you, you know, well, every kid just tries to get some level of attention from their parents. Yeah, competition is almost a poison. Mm. We don't compete with ourselves. We try to compete with the other guy. And that's where the poison is. We yeah. compare ourselves to other people. When you compare yourself with yourself and you get better each day, you don't have to worry about the other guy or how good the other guy is. Cause maybe you don't have the uh, ability to be the size he is or the speed he is, but you have the ability to work hard. You have the ability to get better. And by the way, the late Kobe Bryant got that message 
from the movie Rudy. Mm. If I got better each day, but I need to prepare each day. Like he would, before a basketball game, before practice, he would show up an hour or two hours before and shoot around the horn. So he would start at one uh, end and go around if he swished, but if he hit the rim, he would go back to the starting point. He had to squish every shot. Wow. Sometimes that took him an hour. Sometimes it took him two hours. And uh, I found that out by going to a Lakers game and my daughter seeing the national out, watching him do that. And he discovered I was there. Then he walks over to me and says, you Rudy? I said, yes. He said, no, no, the real Rudy. He wanted to know, the real Rudy. I said, I am the real Rudy. And he got very, very emotional. He says, you're my hero. Without hesitation, he says, your movie taught me what I'm doing now. Wow. Amazing. You know? Yeah. So you never know when I want to quit. I didn't quit because a lot of human beings as humans, you're going to want to quit. Is this worth it? Uh, how many walls do you have to break down to get this message across? Patience, I think, has a lot to do with it and knowing where you're going. You know, you, you ever go on a journey and things don't go right? Yeah, well, frequently. It doesn't say the, the goal <laughs> doesn't change. The, the process changes. So you have to adapt to the process. Yeah. And that... That's what makes a champion, by the way, that when you understand the mental preparation and the preparation you need to do with an initiative and the ingenuity and innovation you need today, just like what we're going through, my opinion is, you know, you never quit on your goal, but your goal does change. That's okay. Like, hey, my goal was to be the starter of Notre Dame someday. Well, it changed. But the goal never changed. To be part of Notre Dame's tradition, that's what, it, that's what it became. Therefore, I didn't have to worry about becoming a star. Just cooperate. Just be part of something. Contribute and have the character not to quit and be, have the courage to go out to practice every day. That's how it's changed. But I still got, I got to play for Notre Dame uh, at one moment showed my dad uh, that, hey, we can do this. Yeah. Then you go make a movie. You know, you think about that. You know, I say, how do you make a movie out of that? A lot of people want to make a movie. So, well, what's the purpose of the movie? Mm. You know, if you have a good purpose, good message, then you have a movie. Yeah, I think, too, for you, you know, yeah, there was that that one play, but that one play and everything, like you said, that led up to that one play. I mean, it, it gave a lot of people hope probably around you, even, your, you know, your teammates, especially, you know, not so much just just the audience that watched the movie eventually, but those people that were living that movie with you, you know, in real yeah, life. There, but not every teammate bought into you. Mm. That's the other thing. Just some bought into you because m most of them were entitled yeah. and titled ones don't want anything to do with this goofball running yeah. around like he's somebody right? well, that's a good lesson too right in life i mean not yeah. everybody's gonna buy into you not everybody's gonna buy it you don't worry about those guys so you don't walk out to practice with those guys and hear their nonsense yeah. so they're not going to tell you what are you what are you out here for i, I never walk with them to hear that yeah information i love that yeah, you walked out with the guy and said, hey, Rudy, you're going to have a good practice today. Those are the guys I hung around. Yeah. It's interesting, you know, for years, Derek Jeter would always tell me, he says, I don't read the newspaper because they don't, they don't ever say anything good about me in there. Right. <laughs> well, why would you, well, why would you read the newspaper? I don't even read the internet. I don't care yeah. what they say because people have different opinions. I go to do a speech once and this guy come up to me and says, hey, I'm better than you. I said, you bet you are. There's no question. But the difference between you and I, I'm up here and you're down there. You know, and yeah. you know, pe people just want to compare all the time instead of listening to the message. They get that confused. Yeah. I think today, more than ever, uh, even the younger generation, there's a lot of competition amongst each other. When I love what you just said earlier about compete with yourself. Yeah. And that, yeah. you know, it's a lot easier. In a, in a way. It, oh, yeah, you know, I was watching the uh, golf yesterday, the kids, the uh, putting, uh, uh, it's the putt chip 
drive championship. Mm. At, uh, think about it, Augusta, these kids get nine years old to 16. Amazing. They're not competing with the other guy. They're competing with themselves. It's yeah. a mental, it's really, golf is so cool because that's who you're competing with is yourself. Yeah. But and, I bet you, uh, I bet you, you know, come, you know, come that last day, guys can often get in trouble when they start looking at who's ahead of them and stay, they yes, get in that chase they, game. They are, yeah. Instead of focusing on, hey, here's what I need to do. Yeah. Rudy, how, how do you, how do you keep yourself so upbeat and positive and, and again, just hyper uh, talking to guys like you. Okay. Period. Appreciate it's that, that simple. Yeah. Uh, you know, I need to speak to guys like you that have that upbeat uh, outlook of life. And that's what keeps me going. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a bit contagious. I, I feel the same way. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, uh, I don't even watch TV. I don't even know what's, People are telling me this gone. Is that really? I really. How come you're not up to date? On, why should I be? It's all nonsense. It's yeah. all stuff that's not true. What's true is what. What are you doing right now? <laughs> Did you make your bed this morning? Did you treat your wife right? Did you treat the dog right? Treat your kids right? Did you learn a lesson today? Did you fail and learn from your failures? Those type of things, you know. Uh, deal with life, reality of life, not information that's trying to control your mind yeah so. i i love that i love that some people tend to la latch on to all that information and then they say wait who am i i, I don't know what my goals are anymore i don't know where i'm right. going and they're too, too attached to the periphery they should buy your shirt i am i am i am better. i am i am great i am this i am that you know that i am is so important yeah is that are you are you big on self talk even with yourself? Self talk is very important. That's the only look. Who the only person you're going to listen to is who? <laughs> yourself. Man. That's true. Yeah. I use self talk through my whole process through the military when I was in the Navy through boot camp. I became a leader because I knew how to do certain things like fold underwear, fold socks shine shoes, make a bed. That was taught to me by growing up in a big family, mm. with my mother. So you use those skills and you became a leader because people look for character and pride, the leaders, because you could trust that guy. Very true. Very true. Yeah. You can't trust someone with a lot of information. You don't know his character. True. Yeah, well said. Mm -hmm. Rudy, what for you, your journey? I mean, again, we, we know the movie and, you know, before that, military right right what what was it like after you graduated i mean what was Notre Dame? see that's yeah. the other problem i didn't i didn't know what to do yeah it's common it's common but here's the key you ready this is huge inspiration is your key when you get inspired you get goals mm. you don't pick dreams out of the air you get inspired when i saw the movie rocky it inspired me when you read a good book and inspires you, when you hear good words and inspiration is your key. That's why it's important for you to watch good, good messages, good movies, good songs, inspiration. When I got inspired, that's when I got the new dream. Cause really think about it. I got my dream going to Notre Dame. That was number one academically. That was accomplished uh, playing football. That was accomplished. And what do you graduated three goals. Yeah. Uh, but all the little goals in between, like uh, <laughs> when you got your white pants in football, your goal was to get gold pants. Yep. Uh, when they put you in the baseball locker room, your goal was to get in the football locker room. See, goals change along the journey because that's called reality. You got to do the little things in order to get the big thing done. So when I graduated, I didn't have no more goals mm. until I saw the movie Rocky. But while I was living, going to Notre Dame, living on campus, living in the ACC, I said, this is a movie. This, wow. And that became reality. Very cool. Yeah. And, and because God has a special way of giving you uh, certain dreams, uh, self-talk, that intuition inside you, there's something inside you that's stirring. And when it's initiated through inspiration, bam, there's your dream. There's your goal. There's your reality. 
is your attitude, is the mental preparation, all the things that a champion has to adjust and adapt to. He can because he has a heart and, you know, he has a character and the courage and the charisma to do it. And my opinion is it only happens if you have inspiration. Yeah. So I come across this a lot, and I'd love to hear your mm -hmm. thoughts on it. Those that are inspired, and then they get jammed up and say, but I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do what next. I don't know what well, to do. Well, they're not inspired. Got it. Right? Inspiration. There's a difference between ins being inspired and being, oh, I like to do that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that looks like something I like. No. Inspiration is like that boat getting in that boat. And not burning your boat. That's when you're inspired. You're ready for battle. Yeah. In, in in baseball, we say it's going from when you make the decision to go from interested to right. committed to committed. Yeah. And baseball is very boring. Yeah. Uh, so hey, hey, be, hey. <laughs> no, no. When you're out there in left field, yes. you got mentally you got to get yourself. You got to prepare yourself. And if the boss hit this way, where am I going to go with it? You're always in that game. Yep. Right? You're always in that game, but people don't see that. The audience say, oh, this is boring. No, there's a mental game going on with those ball players out there. That's why they're not bored, because mentally they're in the game. The Every guys day. who the guys who make mistakes are the guys who don't get prepared during the game or in preparation during the game. That's why they mess up. Yeah. Now, I know that by being around great players, talking to them, and, and uh, they go into a zone, of course. And uh, I know my nephew played Major League Baseball in the minor league for five years. And one day he said, I had enough. Mm. I'm double A. Uh, maybe I don't want what I thought I wanted. And he had the courage to leave yeah. because it is a grind. Total. Anything's a grind, especially any dream, any goal. If you really want it, you're going to grind it out. If you don't want it, you say, ah, that's not for me. Hmm. He was looking at, oh, I can make a lot of money in baseball. If you're after the money, dude, it's not going to work. Yeah. You know, but if, if you're after the purpose and the commitment of the game, then it will work. Yeah. So I'm guessing based on you saying that, uh, you know, the financial incentive of a blockbuster movie was not something that you No, I, I, didn't, I didn't even think about money. Uh, in fact, the money they gave me, I paid out to my friends who helped me get the movie made. Mm. Helped me along the way. I ended up, I think at 200000 I ended up with 50000 after I paid everybody off. Wow. Because here's how I thought. I said... You know, where would I be if it wasn't for him? Yeah. What would I do if he didn't help me? Sure. So instead of becoming selfish, you become selfless. Mm -hmm. And that's why it works. And that's why Hollywood engaged in me because I was selfless, not yeah. selfish. Yeah, Very, it's cool. It's a, it's, it's a yeah. good story. So the, what, yeah. what year did the movie come out? Was it 93? Early 93, 93, 93 correct. Okay. Uh, 92, we actually produced it. 30 days, that's how they gave us. Wow. No, 32 days to shoot it. Wow. Then it took seven months for post production, but 32 days. You know what amazed me? The actors would come on, like that baby would come on set, would do all his scenes in four days. Wow. So the movie was shot out of sequence. Charles Dutton in one day. I said, oh, wow, this is, is this how movies are done? Yeah, they shoot it out of sequence. But what's amazing, the director and these actors are so well prepared. They know the emotion. They know what they need to do. It's so, and that's why a good director uh, is valuable. Yeah. You know, he directs him. This is a scene we want, and the actor responds to that. Wow. It, well, what what year what year did you graduate Notre Dame? Seventy six, spring of seventy six. So there was quite a bit of time between your your High exit school. from Notre Dame and and the, that movie. Oh yeah, ten years. Huh. Mm -hmm. So so what were you, what did you do in between? Did you have another so, career? Sold insurance. Okay. I had to sell insurance to understand relationships. <laughs> <laughs> in no shows. <laughs> that's, uh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. But I'm guessing. It's the things you do, you're always in preparation. 
for the big one. Yeah, I love it. You know, because when you look back on your life, no matter where you are, right, yeah. young or old, you could always say, man, I didn't realize how those dots were going to connect. Correct. But now I understand. Now you understand. You don't think about it. You just go through this process, like I said. And, and, and by the way, what are you doing? Be the best you can during that time. Don't worry about it. Yeah. And I got inspired while I was selling insurance by watching the movie Rocky. Mm. And that's when I started putting it all together while I was selling insurance. Then I would tell my story to people and they would respond to it. I said, hey, there's a story here. Yeah. So I tested it on people. And did you turn it into, was it a book first? Before? No, just, no, no, nothing. Oh, wow. You know, they say, oh, you need a treatment. You need this. No, no. I don't want people to do what I did to get a movie made. It's too hard. You know, <laughs> it's too hard. But the way I did it was not traditional. No treatment, no book, just relationships. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, there's always that alternative way, right? There is. That's what I'm saying. There's always a way. There's always another way. My way may not be your way. So don't worry about how I did it. Yeah. You know, I speak at USC Film School uh, every year, and it's coming up again uh, to the students ready to graduate. And you never know from all over the world, very talented, they still need to hear the message because it's, it's tough just because you think they know more. No, they need to be inspired as well. Yeah. It, it sounds like, though, as you speak, one of your gifts is that you have a, a, a belief in yourself and you have a belief that things are going to work out. 100%. That's the key. You just said it. I am. Yeah. I like your shirt. I am. Oh, I'm going to send one to you. Don't worry. Yeah, man. I love it. <laughs> Jack, quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Jack's happy. And here's why. He's got two. Excuse me. Uh, so Jack's an important part of this whole process. Uh, we had two dogs get rid of one. Now Jack is good because now he gets all the love. So he becomes a very good buddy now. He mm. protects you. Uh, if anybody comes to the door, he'll bark. If he sees a dog on TV, he'll bark. But otherwise, he's a gentleman, you know. So my whole point, the dog is your best friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, I said, if you get a dog, man, there's nobody better than a dog. Yeah. Keeps, give, keeps you supported and feeling good. Absolutely. 100%. You know, I live alone now because I'm divorced and my best friend is my ex-wife and my other best friends are my, my son and daughter and my dog. Yeah. You know, so you're pretty well taken care of. Yeah. Hey, we got a dog last year, little Rocco, the bulldog and he's, Oh uh, yeah. The bulldog. Yeah. 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 Mine's he, a golden, he keeps us busy. And feeling good. Yeah. <laughs> they're awesome. Aren't they? Oh, they're the best. They got yeah. a, it's the same, it's the same thing though. They're always, uh, yeah. you know, keeping us comforted and entertained. Yeah. And you feed them good. I, like Jack, I feed him eggs and he gets, uh, rice. He gets brown rice, eggs. He gets, uh, all kinds of cauliflower, all the different colors, and 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 he just loves breakfast. And he gets turkey or chicken in it, so he waits for breakfast. So, <laughs> man, I, I would wait for breakfast too if I knew you were cooking like that. <laughs> well, I had to. He was getting fast. And no, dude, we got to change your diet, dude. <laughs> yeah, no, I love, I love it. I love yeah. it. I yeah. know. See. Same with our dog. We have a little, that little bulldog. He could put on yeah. weight pretty quickly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got to figure out, okay, here's the food you need to eat, right? <laughs> That's awesome. So, Rudy, for you, you're, you're in your 70s now. Right, 72. 72. Mm -hmm. what, what's inspiring you today? What keeps you fired up and excited? Well, there's a couple projects. I, I'm working on a couple projects. Uh, one's an animation, and one's another uh, feature film. We're writing it right now with... Angelo Pizzo, a guy who wrote Hoosiers and Rudy, and we'll get that in production and Bob with a film company. So I love film. I love putting stories together. I love putting people together. That's one. And two, I like doing this. Yeah. Um, I have a ownership in a cheese company. 
So I love that. I do a lot of different things to keep me kind of like there and busy and happy. Yeah. It's that, yeah. uh, yeah. When you're doing things, you feel, you know, you just, when you're accomplishing things, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that's the key. I feel like there's a lot, regardless of your age, whether you're, you're older or younger, I feel but like you, you, you have to keep yourself moving. You know, I tell a 40 year old man, you're dead. I'm alive. Yeah. And you're doing nothing, dude. What are you doing? You know, get a dream, get a goal, get a purpose. You know, just don't go to work and come home. Have a purpose. Yeah. Anyhow. And I'm guessing that, you know, these projects that you have keeps you mm -hmm. motivated and, and inspired, <clears throat> you know, to well, just yeah, do a little bit more every day. Yeah. And, and you, know, you, you get the people around you that know what they're doing, which makes it even better. Hmm. You become creative. I like the creative side. Yeah. Like our animation projects are great people, very, very renowned people putting the project together. And uh, they're into the Rudy message. So that's what makes it nice. The Rudyisms, we call it. Yeah. You know, develop animation with the Rudyisms. Yeah, you I know. think it's so cool how, how just really you being you has created this, this whole brand. Yeah, it, you know, that came from, uh, how can you say this, uh, comes from walking the campus of Notre Dame saying, I am somebody, I am going to be somebody. I'm not that guy you say I am. Yeah, I am Rudy. God made me as God made me no different than you, bro. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, that's how I thought my, my whole life changed because of that. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I spoke at Notre Dame uh, two years ago. You did. And and we got to, yeah, we got to go on the field and, and you know, do, do a whole tour. It was fantastic. And it's, you know, your, your name and your presence is there for those of us that, you know, that when I went there, you know, you were the first guy I think of. Yeah, yeah. And I hear that all the time. People come from all over the country just to see where the movie was shot and our, where Rudy, you know. Yeah, I saw what you speak to at Notre Dame. Who'd you speak to? Oh, um, play like a champion. Yeah, see, I've never spoken at Notre Dame yet, and you have. Yeah. yeah. Good for well, you. I'd rather I I would rather have played there than spoken there, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got you got one thing over me, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there, there's still time. There's still yeah, time. There's still, well, you know, it's to me, it's more about what Notre Dame means to me than than anything else. It's kind of cool. I just did a Zoom call with Duke University, right? Okay. And uh, they were cool, the lacrosse coach, yeah. really cool. And uh, Stevenson University. I mean, I love doing the Zoom call with the coaches and the players. Hockey team, the North Dakota hockey team, they're cool. But you know what, because they, they need to hear it. They get jammed yeah. up in their own world yeah. so much. And that they forget to enjoy yeah. just what they get to do and the impact that yeah, they get to have. Absolutely. Now, the young lady, the Christine, did you talk to Christine, play like a champion? Yeah, yeah, Christine. She was a cheerleader when I was there. Wow. Yeah. And her husband's a good guy, too. Wow, that's a small world. He was a cheerleader, too. <laughs> yeah, they, they do a great good job. People. They run a great program over there. Yeah, they're good people. Yeah. And, you know, it was a, it was just great energy and very yeah. positive and, yeah. you know, they, they want to do a lot of good for, for mm -hmm. kids really. And coaches, yeah. of course, which, which is fantastic. I, yeah. I, I had a question that I, I wanted to ask you sure. just about when you talk to people and, and you work with people and you hear them not feeling that good about themselves. Yeah. Like how do you get people outside of just your presence and being around them to, to change their beliefs and how they feel about themselves or how they see themselves. Well, you, you, that's, that's, that's a very complicated question. Uh, you just, you keep it simple. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you don't know what they're going through. One, Yeah. you know, and two, so you tell them stories. Hopefully it's a story that will connect with them or uh, ask them questions or, and they usually don't tell you the truth right away until they trust you. Yeah. So, you know, and so you just tell them stories. I think Rudy opens up that door, brings down that barrier 
allows them to talk, allows them to tell what's on their mind. So that is a gift. Uh, I'm not a great speaker per se, but I'm a great storyteller. Yeah. You know, and I love telling stories so, about certain things and how, why certain things happen. And that seems to connect with people. Mm. Yeah, that's what, that's what I love about sports guys and athletes. Yeah. They're never short of a story. No, Mike Sweeney had played for the Kansas City Royals. Oh, yeah, I know Mike. Yeah. yeah. So Mike uh, is getting cut from the Royals, right? But he noticed, he says, they need a first baseman. Mm. So he puts his glove in his bag and gets on the bus where the team's going to go play a game. And he's just been cut. And the coach sees him, what are you doing on the bus? He says, well, you need a first baseman. That was it. <laughs> yeah. That was it. See, he saw the need, fulfilled the need, and he and the coach let him, what did he become? Man, he's a Hall of Famer, isn't he? Yeah. He's a, I mean, a, he, he was a, excellent. Man. I don't know if he got all the way to the Hall of Fame, but he was yeah. definitely up there. He, One uh, of the greatest human beings you ever uh, want to meet. Yep. He just had another child. Very cool. I remember when I, you know, when I started coaching with the Yankees, yeah. uh, you know, I was a young guy. I was just, I was 23 when I started yeah. Coaching wow. and um, how many years you played coach with the well, like 12. 12, yeah. And I, uh, so Mike, you know, Mariano Rivera gave me a, a, a base at a game. Oh, yeah, he signed it to the Sandman, Rudy. Yep, and, and, you know, it's funny. Uh, I got my Yankee, my trophy case, my a base from Yankee Stadium, and I'm sitting in a, my Yankee chair right now. Okay, yeah, I know that one. <laughs> Let me see, let me see if you see it. Yeah. See yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> 45. I like Yeah, it. man. That's from the clubhouse, right? Yep. Joe Torrey I went to his golf tournament a couple years ago, and they paired me up with some great guys. We won the tournament. I'm not a good golfer, but I made the putt. That made the difference. There you <laughs> go. But, right? So we get this big Joe Torrey, you know, Cristo and – and uh, Greg Maddox tournament too, we won because I was teamed up with the right people. What am I saying? If you're teamed up with the right people, you'll win. Mm. So when you coach for the Yankees, that had to be a great experience. Yeah, well, I did it. I was young when I started. I started, uh, yeah. you know, I was 23. So yeah. I had a chance like you to learn from the best. Yeah. What they did and then take it, you know, take it forward. So what, 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 now, excuse me, but what are you doing now? Are you still so, coaching? You're still yeah, young. I still coach. I coach athletes. I coach companies now. I speak. Oh, there you go. Yeah. That. And, and it's, again, similar to what you do. I, I find a lot of joy in, uh, you know, yeah. motivating people, inspiring them, and then giving yeah. them a plan and holding them accountable to it. Why did you leave Major League Baseball? Well, my career was up. My, yeah. uh, my contract was up. And <laughs> that, that, ship had, <laughs> that ship had sailed. But, you that know, ship it, has sailed. Yeah, yeah, but it, but truth truth be told, you know, I could have gone to other teams and organizations. Sure. Yeah. But when you play with the Yankees, it's yeah. like playing with Notre Dame. Who are you going to go to next? That's that's a great point. Yeah, where do you go? That's why coaches have a hard time once they finish at Notre Dame. Where do you go? Yeah. Where it's do you very go? hard. You you it's go very home. hard. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's it's kind of like playing you know your, but no, that, that's a great point. There's nothing better. I just ordered a Yankee rug from my from my man cave. Cool. Yankees in Notre Dame. I'm a big Yankee fan. Yeah. Big Notre Dame fan. It's always been it's just so much tradition involved. That's what I was gonna say. Winning, it's winning tradition. Yeah, it really is. It's all about tradition. And and I love that. Remember, uh, you know, I don't know, it's some when you meet certain players and they pay attention to you. He said, wow, this is not a bad guy. The press made him a bad guy, but he's not a bad guy. Yeah. You know? yep. He's a good guy. You know, uh, no, I've met a lot of different players like you have, and you see the difference in their spirit. And uh, a good friend of mine coaches for the Milwaukee Brewers. He's a bench coach. Okay. But he got that job because of a kid. Listen to this. A kid he recruited at Notre Dame to play baseball for him at Notre Dame. Greg wow. Consul, right? And Consul wins a couple of world champions, has a, uh, 
unorthodox batting stance, but but with the, with the Marlins, right? Yeah, yeah, great yeah. guy, yeah. great yeah. guy. So Murph gets fired from Arizona State, ends up as an interim coach for the San Diego Padres, uh, head coach. I guess the head coach, something happened. Yeah. He ended up as the interim. Then Greg Council hired him as a bench coach. At, uh, but he's one of the better coaches, I feel. Uh, he, he's a coach's, player's coach. Player's but, coach. Yeah, yeah, that's the best way to be. Yeah, yeah. He's a good guy. And uh, uh, do you know him at all, Pat? I, I don't, but um, I don't know him. Yeah, if you ever get to meet him, you'll love him. And uh, and Greg Conch is a great guy, too. Yeah. He's a little more organized as far as strategically, you know. Yeah, Pat, to be, Pat, to manage, Pat, you have to be. Yeah. Pat is the one who got baseball back at Notre Dame. Uh, came, came to Notre Dame, heard the coaches retiring, and wouldn't leave Notre Dame until they hired him. Wow. Yeah. So he's one of those guys. You well, know. you know, it shows it's again, it's, uh, you know, the power of, of your network and how yeah. winners mm -hmm. attract winners. Oh yeah. And being around a winning culture like you have, uh, I, I remember when, uh, they did, a. Uh, I went to the Steinbrenner family brought me up to their office and they did an article on me on a Yankee magazine. So okay. I'm in one of those Yankee magazines. Yeah. Page deal. I'm going, whoa. And uh, Girardi was coaching then, and and great guy, by the way. Yeah, I work. I worked. Uh, I worked under Joe. He was our manager. Yeah, Him great guy. Girardi. Yeah. He. Uh, my gosh. He caught, went to Northwestern. Sharp guy. Yep. Just a just a genuine good guy. Who who's he coaching today? The Phillies, Philadelphia. The Phillies. Yeah. Yeah, he's and and you know, he he was very good at baseball, but I think one of his biggest loves was football. Yeah, yeah. Well, he 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 kind of showed that when Notre Dame uh, played in Yankee Stadium. Mm -hmm. uh, I got the jersey they made up. I should okay. send you one. Well, hold on, I'm gonna hold on here. All Let right, I gotta see this. Anymore. Hold on. <laughs> Yeah, cool. Here it is. Isn't that neat? Oh, yeah, that's awesome. You put your name on it. See that? Yeah, very cool. I'll send you one. I got one. All right. Wow. Just send me your address. I will. That That's yeah. amazing. And we'll have one for you. That's so cool, <laughs> man. Very yeah. Cool. yeah, that's Notre Dame and Yankee. That's my dream. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah, and, and what's interesting, I ended up at Yankee Stadium a little different than how I pictured it. I'm I would play not my, surprised. I, I would play in my backyard and be in Mickey Mantle, you know, and Roger Maris. And, and here I am in Yankee Stadium. They play in the seventh inning sometimes. No one comes to, into our house. I mean, no one and pushes us around. Yeah. That little moment. So you, you make it differently, but you may. That's my whole point, you know. And getting to talk to guys like you is a fascinating, awesome. Same, yeah, same, same. It's it's very inspirational to to just again get for me to even talk to you and hear about the journey and and I just love you have some uh, I guess I'll call them Rudyisms as you call them, but yeah, just some different ideas. You know, we yeah. we can get so linear and say this is the only way for me to do this. Yeah, there's other ways. You know, I always say. Uh, uh, the greater the struggle, the greater the victory, because the more you struggle, the victory sweeter, yeah. you know, when, yeah. when you have those bad moments. And, and, uh, and you I used to have them. excuses that killed my dream. And once you eliminate those excuses, man, things became different. Yeah. And again, I would assume it's just a decision to say, okay, that's it. It's that, again, the burning of the boats moment where you set your excuses on fire. Yeah, yeah. It's one day uh, uh, I get a call from Diamond Dallas Page, a professional wrestler. Mm. And uh, I wear this shirt now because he <laughs> challenged me to 100,000 uh, minutes or hours, hours of exercise of his DDPY. I went from, I lost almost 30 pounds just by doing 
his his DDPY, and I still do it every day. But you know, I wanted the shirt. Yeah, <laughs> you earned it. It's just a T-shirt, but yeah. I earned it. You know, it's a hundred thousand points you get uh, DDPY. So I said, I'm getting that. <laughs> That's the purpose, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and but he he was awesome. He he's we're writing his screens play right now his story That'll be the more i got to know him i said why he went from selfishness to selflessness mm. in his career he did a i want you to look this up resurrection of jake the snake okay. watch that documentary it is awesome jake was on his deathbed oh. and uh it, dallas would never been in professional wrestling unfortunately for jake the snake uh dallas was running a nightclub had no, and he was just a promoter. And Jake would come into his nightclub. He said, I could do that. And he became friends with Jake and Jake got him hooked up with a couple guys. And all of a sudden, you know, Dallas is in the Wrestling Hall of Fame now. Wow. And there was a, this is how things happened. There was a young man who was a Green Beret, who he got the Green Beret because of a movie called Rudy. Mm. And his mother was a meth dealer and he lived in a trailer park. Well, kept him going with professional wrestling in the movie Rudy. Mm. So he joins the military, becomes a, a Green Beret, 16 years. He gets out. Now his goal is to become a college wrestler and a professional wrestler. He wanted to wrestle at Arizona State. So he kept emailing me, emailing me, and emailing me. And finally he said, okay, I'll meet the guy. <laughs> the minute I met him, I said, I fell in love with his spirit, you know, and he became the oldest wrestler or NCAA athlete ever to participate wow. in a division one sport. He only wrestled one time. Wow. And now he's with Diamond Dallas Page. So he goes out to Atlanta, Georgia to tell Diamond Dallas Page he wants to become a professor and Diamond kind of ignored him. And one day he kept showing up, kept showing up. <laughs> now he's in that profession. Plus he's in uh, the training for, uh, uh, it's a great story. He graduated from Arizona State, all this, but it, it's just meeting people like that. Yeah. What inspires me. Yeah, I could see it. I yeah. could see it. Rudy, yeah. I, I got a question. I ask everybody this question. You go for it. It's, yeah, I'm dying to hear your answer because yeah. it's simply this. I call it the Becoming a Champion show because yeah. I feel like we're all on a journey to become a champion. What does the word champion mean to you? Well, a champion, it, it, it's to me, it, it's the heart. Mm. You know, if you have the heart, you could be a champion making your bed every morning. You can be a champion by treating your wife right or treating your peers right or your coworkers right. That's a champion. You don't have to be an athlete to be a champion, but your heart is the key. And it's all your attitude. It's your attitude about life. I met a young lady. She's an angel, man. And she'll help anybody. That's a champion. You know, she's older, but she's out to help people. Um, I saw a woman uh being taken out of a you know she was on a bench in a park and the police officer took her away she was homeless she's just thrown out of her home i said wow so i kind of followed her in my truck i first i stopped the police officer what she do wrong he says nothing i said why did you, why why did you make her leave because it's not for her to hang out here she's she's homeless i said he says, yeah well that's not for her this is not, where is she going? She said, I don't know. I don't care. That kind of gave me like, wow, I care. Mm. So I want to know where she's going. I said, are you okay? And, you know, she didn't know what to say. So we took her down to the homeless center. Just give her a place to go in another direction. But also gave me the spirit to contact some people. Let's build some shelter, some real homes, some communities for the homeless. So they have a place to go. The bureaucracy involved is unbelievable. Yeah, I bet. It, it's, it's not right. There's so many homeless. Some people 
are not meant to be homeless, but they're homeless. Some people want to be homeless. But you build these communities. There's a lot of mental um, problems out there, you know, yeah. mental sickness. I'm aware of that. But some people that just need a second chance, too. Yeah. yeah. Anyhow, that's one of the projects I'm working on as well. But you got to go through all the red tape and all the crazy stuff. Yeah. But, you know, it's that mentality, too, that you care. See, that, that's a champion. Who, people yeah. who care. I don't know. I don't care how much you know, how much do you care? Yeah. That is a champion. Yeah. And that care could, could take you and every, and everybody else a long way. 100%. So when people say you're a champion, really, and what? What are you a champion in? What? And how many hockey pucks you scored in a game? How many times you put it in the net? Or how much do you care about your teammate? It's to me, that's a champion. Yeah. Yeah, there were, you know, there there was a there was a scene in the movie that I really enjoyed where, you know, they they got on you for for working hard and out hustling them and yeah. they accused you that, of that, that's making the entitled, them look bad. That's the entitled athlete. Yeah. Yeah, they and they and you you made them look bad. And I always say yeah. you made he yourself. already quit. That guy quit. He was easy to beat on the practice field. Yeah. Because he quit. He didn't put the effort. Yeah, so he, don't, he don't want the effort. And those guys are easy to spot. Yeah. It's like uh, sometimes talent is a curse. It, when, it is. That's why when you, if, you know, I talked to Antonio Brown. Hmm. Great kid, by the way. Miss Red. Yep. He has a heart. And Tom Brady brought him in. Tom Brady's a champion. Yep. He knows how to bring someone in and make them feel good. Yeah, you made some mistakes, dude, but you're not going to make it around here. You can do what's right. You can stick to the plan, and you're going to become a champion. Yep. <laughs> and he did. Yeah. He scored a touchdown in the Super Bowl. Yep. Uh, how many guys would give him that shot? Why does Tom Brady? Tom Brady's not a great athlete. He's just a true champion. He makes people believe in themselves because yep. he believes he makes those guys who are mediocre guys believe they're better than the guy across from them. Mm -hmm. That is a champion too. Yeah. That's like, again, Der you know, it's, uh, Derek, you know, Derek Jeter, when you look at his stat line, there's a lot better ball players than Derek Jeter, but there's yeah, great. You know what? I'm, I'm glad you mentioned Derek Jeter. I talked to him when he was a senior in high school. I didn't know that. Yeah. In Michigan. Uh, I talked to his high school class and he was in the audience. Yeah, wild. You just never know. Yeah, you, you never you never know who's who's listening to the message. You, you don't. We don't know who's listening now. Yeah, it's true. You, you just know? that's why I always say it. you you there's that one person yeah speaking to a, a lot, but there's one person that hears it and says, Hey, right. you know what? I am. I, I have am. to change my yeah. way. I just interviewed a Navy SEAL on our Rise Above It Rudy podcast. You should listen okay, to him. I will. He, I mean, he's really, it's all about adversity with him. Uh, his dad threw him off a ship. They were sailing. I guess they're like hippies, the family. And his dad, he says, if it wasn't for my dad doing what he did, I would never became the SEAL. He gave me that edge. Yeah. You know, I said, wow, think about that. That's so true. You know? Uh, but, you know, sometimes uh, as, you got to listen to his whole, his whole mental state, how he prepared himself. It's really, I interviewed a guy, uh, we got some great interviews. Uh, there's Dan Hassey, who, he, he was a classmate of mine at Notre Dame, became the CEO of Sprint. Okay. So the guy came in, Sprint was going bankrupt. So the CFO comes in with the bankruptcy papers and Dan says, well, what are these? He said, well, we got to fill this out. He says, I'll tell you what you can do. Fair you can go fill them out with another company because you're not filling them out here. You go find another job. He said, he picked people who saw Sprint differently, mm -hmm. not as bankrupt. They went to the number one company in the world with him. Now he went to Notre Dame. He went to MIT. He was an engineer, but he also had that, that vision that of a, he's a great, listen to his interview as well, culture, how to build a culture. I mean, it's some great stuff. There was a girl at UCLA that coached at UCLA. I never knew anything about gymnastics, but she became the, I don't know, 10 time 
champion because of her mental state. And she picked people who knew gymnastics around her. She didn't know anything about gymnastics. Listen to her. Yeah. It's it's about mental preparation, not the state of mind. So it's all mental. Yeah. And I, you're I that love, guy. I could see that, man. You're awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You are you are too. It is yeah. it is it is all mental. And uh yeah. that's why I'm excited for, for this episode to come out and, and it's, well, it's gonna be great. It's very yeah. natural. Yeah. I mean it, it's not like the other ones. It's very natural. I love it. It's got to be a conversation. People, people want real, real people, real conversation. Yeah, and, they don't want the stuff that. Oh, let me think about how, how this happens. No, no. <laughs> no. Just, just follow your passion, yeah. you know, and, and, and that becomes a big deal, you know. Yeah. Well, you whenever you put two sports guys together, something good is bound to happen. <laughs> yeah. One guy called me a poser, right? A poser. Okay. Then a poser gets his butt kicked every day. I guess I am. Yeah. <laughs> got you know, knocked down. Well, but sign I got me up, it. too. Sign me. I'm a poser. Hey, hey but you, you know, know what? In order to get your butt kicked every day, that means you're out there and you got to be on out the there every day. That's yeah. the difference between me and he. Yeah. Like, you know, a lot of people don't understand an athlete, what they go through mentally, you know, physically. I mean, it's it's a grind. Yeah. It's tough. It's every, every, day it's tough. Is a, every day every every day is a new challenge that you most likely have not yeah. experienced exactly right. before. One hundred percent. It's awesome. You learn a lot about yourself. Yep. Yeah. yeah. How to adapt. I, I just I just did a uh, signing in, in the room with OJ Simpson. Wow. My attitude was, oh, why am I, <laughs> oh, this is not good. Oh, I don't want to see. At the end of the autograph, he comes up, comes up to me, very humble, mm. and he says, kind of like, you're my hero, you're the guy, you know, I'm going, whoa, wait a minute, because uh, his best friend was A.C. Collins, mm. who we hired as a uh, football coordinator on the Rudy set. Wow. And he was a great guy. A.C. is the one who saved his life. Yeah. Um, in the Bronco, but I don't know all the circumstances. I don't know all the details, nor do I, am I going to get into that? But the fact he had redemption in that moment, mm -hmm. it's like Jesus on the cross with the, with the guy to the left, you know, the, yeah, saying, you know, he believes. Yep. You're saved. Exactly. Yeah, it's <laughs> true. It, it is. I mean, I'm not going to get religious on you or anything. No, it's okay. But, I, I no. I, but I, we're not here to judge. Is my point. Yeah, that's my point. I'll, 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 I'll leave you with this. You know, in my coaching yeah. career, the most controversial players were my favorite players because I realized that they were just people that needed to be heard or spoken to. Yeah, correct. Uh, Reggie Jackson's a great example. Oh yeah, the best example. The, the best. I'm 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 building a house at Southern Highlands. He's putting out in Vegas here, and I go to where we're working out, and he's sitting in a little cafeteria, and I know it's Reggie, so <laughs> I start talking to him, just normal, and he was normal. Yeah. Because I don't care who he is. He just, you know, I wasn't impressed. That he was Reggie Jack. You're a good guy. Yeah. You know, a lot, a lot of these guys have. They build up this facade, you know, of uh, how people, it, people are people and they just want to be treated right. That's it. That's it. You know, they don't want to be treated. I don't know, Stallone said it best when I met him. He says, I'd rather have a legacy to be remembered as Rambo. Yeah. You, you have a legacy, Rudy. Yep. I said, yeah, I guess I do. We all want a legacy. Yeah, you you know, there's a lot of the the, the emotion that your film you know, brings out in people. I yeah. feel very similar to Rocky. It, it is. And Rocky's messages in that movie was very similar to what I was going through. Yeah. Second chance. And you didn't realize you belonged there too until you got hit. But all the preparation you did. When I got in that game, you go into a zone. Yeah. People, an athlete goes, and I didn't realize that. When you are focused, you go into a 100% zone. Yeah. You don't hear the noise. You don't hear anything. It's yep. everything slow motion, you know, but it's fast. That's what I was going to say. You know, sometimes you don't even remember it until, no. like, you get you watch it afterwards, and you're like, yeah, wow, that's just how happened? that happened. 
Right. <laughs> That's because of preparation. And yeah. the other thing, when they carried me off the field, I was embarrassed. I told the guys, put me down. They said, come on, man. What are you doing? No, no, dude, we'll carry you all the way to the tunnel. I was embarrassed he picked me up because that never happens at Notre Dame. Yeah. Dude, I was only doing what I was supposed to do in my job. Yeah. You know, that's it. Which is a great, which is a great lesson in itself, right? Is yeah. you mm -hmm. just did your job the best way you knew how, and you yeah. were celebrated yeah. for it. For, by people who were inspired by the work ethic. And, and, and that respected you. And they respected you. That's the key respect right there. Yeah. I think yeah. that sums up a champion. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Pretty awesome. It was great. Pretty great. You were awesome, dude. Let's yeah. keep in touch. So how about that show? Wasn't he awesome? Rudy, such a motivating guy, inspirational, motivational, and encouraging. Again, exactly what the Becoming a Champion show is all about. You can see why he was such a great teammate, and you can see what a team player he still is. Open, honest. You know, it was like we were sitting down and at a coffee table and just having a conversation together. And I hope you all were able to join in on our conversation and enjoy it and take some great messages. And the one that I took that meant the most was about inspiration and inspiration finds you. And when it hits you, it captures you and it gives you this motivation and this power and the self-belief inside of you that makes you truly unstoppable. And that's, that's really what the Rudy story is all about. It's about you believing in yourself and believing that nothing can stop you. So I want to remind you of that today. Nothing can stop you. So like Rudy, it's time we all act a bit like Rudy and keep pushing, keep pushing and keep pushing and be excited for what's next and surround yourself with A plus people and watch what happens to your life. This is Coach Dana Cavalier with the Becoming a Champion show. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. And if you did, give us a like, give us a subscribe, share with your friends. Again, help us spread this champion's message, this champion's gospel to build our team of champions. I'll see you all next week with another great episode. See ya.